It's been just over two years since I left the hustle and bustle of big London city and moved back to my homeland of Wales, to the countryside. Two years of learning, rewilding and connecting with myself on a quest of self-sufficiency after feeling so dependent when I lived in the city. With every seed I sow and plant that I grow, my roots grow deeper. Welcome back to the garden. It's April and we finally got some sun and it's not raining. So I'm out in the garden. I'm getting this year's vegetables planted out. I'm so excited. I've never been so excited in all my life for anything I don't think than this year's growing season. So not only am I excited for all the vegetables and the produce that I'm going to grow this year, especially with the help of my new greenhouse, I'm also looking forward to try and get even more self-sufficient. Things like foraging, preserving, and just embracing living out in the country so much more. So what are you going to grow this year, guys? Well, I've got big plans this year to grow even more variety than the last two years. It's only my third growing year but I'm super inspired and I'm going to show you exactly what I've got planted already. Before I show you what I'm growing this year, there's something that's been on my mind and it's starting to get on my nerves a little bit, to be honest with you. The fact that we're referring to this incredibly medicinal, amazing plant as a weed and so much weed killer is bought around the world to kill this weed is really, really sad. I'm talking about dandelions. You probably have them in your garden or in a local park nearby you. This is one of the most medicinally rich plants that we can consume. Medicinally, is that right? You know what I mean. Anyways, we can make dandelion coffee with the roots. So what I'm gonna to do today, there's so many dandelions around here. I'm gonna harvest the roots and we're gonna make some dandelion coffee that is nutritious, tastes like coffee, caffeine free and loaded with so many health properties. Native American tribes use dandelion root to treat a variety of ailments including kidney disease, skin problems and digestive disorders. And there's evidence of humans eating the root 18,000 years ago. Now the whole part of this amazing plant can be used. The leaves obviously are very bitter, similar to kind of rocket, but you can add them to things like soups as well, as well as salads. The flower petals, you can make amazing cordials and desserts with them, but the root is what we want today. So I'm going to dig them up. Tom, Tom, Tom. Just snap my bloody fork, getting the biggest dandelion root out ever. It's like over a hundred years old, I've managed to snap this. But look at that root anyway, that is what I was searching for. Amazing, that's huge. Every little part of this root is precious, so try and get as much of it as you can and put the ground back to normal after. When I lived in London, never would I have imagined that harvesting dandelion root would be something that I'd find so thrilling and exciting, but it really is. And it's just about being outside, especially when the sun's out, hearing the birds sing, it's very therapeutic. Right, let's give them a wash off. I'm gonna let them dry out in the sun for a little while before I roast them until they're lovely and dark and smoky to help add that sort of coffee flavor. To make it, what you need to do is get your sort of sun-dried, dehydrated roots, pop them on a baking tray and into the oven for around about 35 to 40 minutes, just until they are lightly roasted and you can sort of smell them baking. And they should be dry enough so you can crack them and they just break in half really nicely. Blend them up to a fine powder or as fine as you can get it and then mix it with some boiling water. You can pass it through a sieve if you want to, but I like to leave all the goodness in there and it actually tastes like coffee. And you can experiment with how long you roast them for if you want a richer, darker roast, then leave them in the oven for longer. But this, this is perfect. A healthy dandelion root coffee. Amazing. Mm. Now something that I really discovered since being out in the countryside and learning more about foraging and herbal medicine is the fact that this medicine, just like the dandelion, is around us everywhere. I'm talking here, cleavers, sticky willies as some of you may know them as. I don't call them that, I call them cleavers because these are the things you used to throw at people. They stick to you, you know? That's in now in Tom's hair. But anyways, they are packed full of 
incredible healing benefits. Before I get them, look, my wild garlic, again, something that's just growing here now is gonna be growing here forever. The flowers have just come out. There's healing ingredients everywhere. So cleavers have been traditionally used for various medicinal purposes. Things like skin health, the plant is thought to have anti-inflammatory properties that may help soothe the skin and help things like psoriasis, eczema and acne. They've also been traditionally used to help with urinary tract health plus digestive health, soothing things like bloating, constipation and stomach pain. I simply put my cleavers in some distilled or spring water, let it sit in the fridge overnight or a couple of days and then drink. refreshing it's, it's, it's kind of weird because it tastes exactly like cucumber water to me that's the perfect drink for first thing in the morning to sort of give you that that lift that you need beautiful cleavers who'd have thought it so to give you a tour I need to look at my map and I made this map because last year I was just planting my ingredients out in sort of a intuitive way, which is nice, but I wanted a bit more of a plan this year, especially because space is a premium. So I wanted to make this map to figure out where I'm gonna put everything. So in this bed here, we've got my potatoes. This is a huge bed and I wanted to plant a load of potatoes because you know, obviously it's an amazing source of carbohydrates and there's nothing tastier than a homegrown potato. And look, my potato plants are starting to sprout up. So that's really exciting. Soon this will be covered in mounds of green and you'll be able to see the progress. Here, you would have seen in the last gardening video that these are my broad beans. So these are gonna be producing a flower soon where the eventual bean will come and I cannot wait to taste homegrown broad beans. So in this bed, it's easy to tell, it's my onions. And I've got about 150 bulbs because I saw Hugh Richards' video where he said, if you have 150 bulbs, that's three onions a week to eat. So that's kind of what I, I use, maybe a little bit more. And I've just also planted some red onions in here too. And always next to onions, you should have carrots because the smell, the pungent smell of onions um, deters pests from uh, your carrots, carrot root fly. So next to my onions, I've got my carrot seedlings coming up and this is really exciting. I've got some really amazing carrot varieties planted this year. So here we got my garlic. I planted this in the last video, actually the homestead tour. You saw me put in the cloves of garlic actually in this bed. Now look at it, a few months later, they're starting to come up and in a few months time, I'll be able to harvest. Cannot wait for that. I don't know how familiar you guys are with my garden and last year how it looked where my new poly tunnel is was uh, a few terrace beds and in it was rhubarb and when we came to dig out the area to build that big greenhouse i had to move my lovely rhubarb to here and i thought it was going to die but gratefully it didn't die and it's thriving it's coming up now i should be able to harvest some of these lovely stalks of rhubarb soon but my neighbor, she's ahead of me. She's got tons of rhubarb and we're gonna go and pick some rhubarb in a bit. And I'm gonna make the most delicious rhubarb and tomato ketchup that you would have ever seen. It is honestly mind blowing how good it is. Rhubarb and ketchup, it works. Stay tuned for that recipe. This is a little bed that I had some glass over and I planted some things in there. And because of that glass, it had a head start against everything else. And one of the things that I put in there was radishes. And even though I've sowed the seeds so close to one another, I'm starting to get some lovely little radishes. And that peppery flavor of radishes is so nice at the start of the growing season. That's good. And earlier you saw me planting out my lovely Austurian tree cabbage, which is again, something that Hugh Richard introduced me to. He gave me the original seeds. I had to get more. And now I've got about, uh, no, 16. I I was gonna say 12, uh, plants of Asturian tree cabbage, soon to be ready to eat. Oh, we got my chives, we got herbs dotted around. So it feels so nice that the garden is starting to come to life and all the seedlings that I have inside that I'm gonna show you in a sec will be out here soon. And this space will be transformed into a food forest. Talking of forest, let me show you my fruit trees that have come on leaps and bounds. 
If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the struggle I had planting this bit more mature apple tree. And it was such a job getting it actually up this hill and into this hole because it was so big that I was worried that I damaged it as I was planting it. But look, the buds are popping and I'm gonna have some amazing apples on this tree. I'm so excited to be able to come out, wake up in the middle of the summer or autumn, pair of boxes on, nothing else, just picking fruit. That's what I'm imagining in my head, but it's probably not gonna be that great. Anyway, um, this is my pear tree. Look how lovely the flowers are. You can see that there's bees enjoying them. That's what's great about planting stuff out here is that the whole ecosystem is enjoying what I'm doing. And it's a nice feeling to have that impact as well. So I'm gonna give you a whole tour of my new greenhouse in a bit. But in the meantime, to get my seedlings going, I've been using these little greenhouses. And I've got a load of things in here that are just popping up now, including obviously kale and I've got tons of kale. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. I will give some away to family, but I've got about 24 kale plants here. I've got some chard here, which as you know, is my favorite, but I had some issues here. Some of the seeds didn't germinate. I'm not sure why. Maybe they were old seeds, but we still have quite a few plants and these will be ready to pot out soon as well. Look at this lovely baby pack choy, nearly ready to go outside. Just need to give it a few more days to get bigger and establish itself and then it'll be a little bit warmer outside too. I've also got things like Callaloo. I grew that last year, Amaranth. It looked absolutely beautiful and tastes great too. I've even tried to grow some Yakon, which is a tuber. So they're gonna go in the polytunnel once that's ready. I've got loads of celery as usual, probably about 40 little celery plants. You've got some flax. I'm gonna try and get flax seeds this year and it's doing really, really well. I've got a little mystery salad mix that I planted in a milk carton. Broccoli, quinoa popping up at the back there. I'm gonna try and grow quinoa this year. Eggplant, I'm gonna grow eggplant in my greenhouse. And then we've got beetroot and spring onions coming up by here too. Now inside for the warmth, I've got my tomatoes, peppers, chilies, even things like soybeans. And I've also just planted this year's pumpkins and squashes. Me, Country life. One of the most amazing things about moving to the country is the relationships that I've made with people around me, including my amazing neighbor who lets me harvest all well, not all of it, but a lot of their rhubarb, and it's the most incredible giant rhubarb ever. I'm gonna show you how I make my rhubarb and tomato ketchup that I'm gonna jar up and gift to my neighbor, and I may have a few spare for you lucky guys to get your hands on yourself. <laughs> Look at that, that's rhubarb, that's Welsh rhubarb for you. That's how big it is. Oh, refreshing. It's got my rhubarb fan. Whilst I'm here at the rhubarb, it reminds me, last year we made the most amazing rhubarb and custard rice pudding, and you can watch the recipe right by here. You must make my rhubarb and custard rice pudding with saffron. I really wanted to celebrate my neighbor's freshly picked rhubarb, so I had to make something luxurious. To make the rice pudding, into a saucepan placed over a low heat, add a can of coconut milk, followed by a splash of non-dairy milk, a little castor sugar or a natural sugar of your choice, some pudding rice, and then the spices. I'm gonna be adding some ground cinnamon, some ground nutmeg, and some vanilla bean paste and saffron. Give the mixture a good old stir up and let it simmer away for 25 to 30 minutes. I've cut my neighbor's rhubarb into chunks and in a non-stick frying pan, I'm gonna add some cranberry juice, plus some fresh ginger, a pinch of cinnamon, and some maple syrup. Get those ingredients bubbling away before adding the rhubarb and let it cook down until tender. This is also gonna create a lovely glaze to go on top of the rice pudding. All right, I think I got enough rhubarb. So this is how I make my beautiful rhubarb and tomato ketchup that you're gonna be able to get your hands on. First up, what I'm gonna do is chop up some onions and garlic and get them sauteing in my saucepan with a little olive oil. I'm keeping these onions a little bit chunky because this isn't gonna be a fine ketchup. It's gonna be, it's gonna have some bite to it. I really like that. It's a rustic ketchup. Mm. 
We've got the big boy saucepan out today, the cauldron, making an amazing rhubarb and tomato ketchup for you guys. Yeah, buddy. Let the onions release all their sweetness. You need to cook this down for quite a while. That's the key for flavoursome sauces. So once those lovely onions and garlic are sweated down, I'm gonna add some spices, starting with ground cumin, some ground coriander, some celery salt. I'm also gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika for the kick and for that smoky flavor. Oh yeah, gotta get some of that in there. And a good pinch of sea salt. I'm also gonna be adding some dried thyme and oregano also. Let that mix cook out for a considerable amount of time so all of the sweetness comes out of the onion and the garlic. Now it's time for my neighbor's rhubarb. I'm gonna chop it into some chunks and get it into the pan. Get the lid on at this point so it sweats and braises down and sort of melts into the onions and the garlic. It started to rain here in Wales, but that's not gonna stop me making this absolutely delicious ketchup with my rhubarb. It smells so good too. Oh, wow. Time to get some sweetness in here, because after all, rhubarb is quite sour, isn't it? So we're gonna actually add some coconut sugar. And this is gonna add a, a little caramelly note as well, and it's brown as well, so it's gonna add a lovely color. Look at that. Talking of look at that, we've got the look at that merch. It's available to pre-order now. There's a two week window where you can get your order in. Once that two week window is finished, it will never come out ever again. So click the link below this video if you wanna get your hands on the limited edition. Look at that merch. Yeah, boy. But look at that, this is, look at this. This is amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Holy moly. Now, before I let this bubble away and cook down, I'm gonna add some tomato paste. That's got real umami. Talking of umami, I'm gonna add some miso paste and some chopped tomatoes. Plus, I'm gonna add some of my homemade kombucha vinegar. Let's add a couple of bay leaves and then get them in, and let it bubble away for an hour or so. All right, sauce time, baby. This sauce has been bubbling away now for about an hour. It looks and smells absolutely beautiful. I've also sterilized off the jars that I'm gonna use to bottle this up. I gotta taste this before we get it into the jars. I've got good expectations. Oh yeah. Mmm. Tangy, sweet, a little smokiness. Mmm, that rhubarb is unreal. That's a jar of that good sauce. Woo! From my neighbor's garden, from my outdoor garden kitchen in Wales, maybe to you. And there we go, there's my rhubarb and tomato chunky ketchup done. Guys, today is a really exciting delivery. Now that I got the polytunnel means I could grow some really amazing things in it. And one thing that I really wanted was a supply of lemons. I use lemons in so many of my dishes, as you guys know. And today I've got a lemon tree being delivered by my friends from Abergavenny Garden Center. Yo, yo, yo. Hi, hi. It's laden with lemons already. And these is gonna fruit all season, right? Yeah, so there's no actual fruit in season. It's just all year round. Oh, it's not too bad then. Oh, it's warm in here, flipping heck. It's like Spain in this, this polytunnel, so this should be fine in here, right? Yeah, no, it's gonna be absolutely yeah. fine. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the greenhouse. It's still not quite 100% finished yet, but I can't put into words how happy this makes me. I didn't think at this age I'd be so excited to have a greenhouse, but it means that I'm gonna be able to grow a huge variety of things that I wouldn't have been able to grow before, and I can extend the growing season for so much longer, making me more self-sufficient. And the thing that made it hard is the fact that I'm on a hill as well, so I had to get a digger and quickly learn how to use a bloody digger. <laughs> 
There we go, baby. Yeah, buddy. To me, to you. Backwards is forwards, and forwards is backwards. Shit. I don't know if there is a break. There we go. How about that? Bro. Shouldn't have done that. Well, I've done about 15 wins now. I'm starving, Dad, so I might as well have some breakfast now. Oh, it's hard work, this is. Mm. Job well done so far, I think. Anyway, got there in the end, and um, here we have my greenhouse. So let me show you what I've done inside. I have to give my dad a massive thank you for building the greenhouse with me. It was actually a nightmare build, but we got there in the end. Now in a few months time, this is gonna be like a jungle, but I'll show you where we're at at the moment. Come on inside and it's so warm in here. Honestly, I could actually sleep in here. It'd make me so happy. So if you come inside uh, right now, I'm using this space to get some of my seedlings started. We've got the lemon tree, of course, which is obviously loving its new warm home. And I've got beds all the way up the sides and all the way up the back. So a lot of growing space. I'm gonna have things like my tomatoes, aubergine, peppers, chilies um, in the summertime and melon too. I'm gonna try and grow melon here in Wales, which is very exciting. The seedlings have just started popping up. And then once the summer's gone, I can then get a whole load of other um, you know, essentials to me, like things like kale and carrots and, you know, everything, because this is going to extend my growing season so much more. I decided to put some wood chip on the floor, which my local tree surgeon just dropped off last year, and it's going to break down and actually turn into a really good compost. I can eventually put a bed running down the middle, but because me and Tom, we make videos, um, I'm thinking I could do cooking videos in here when the weather's not good. And if you come and look at this view out of here, uh, it's definitely gonna be a nice little spot for filming. So the last few days I've been sowing some more seeds and having my little table undercover. This is everything I've always wanted. So, ah oh, yeah, it's just a very, very exciting moment. And look, we have something popping up. Hello little bean, you're gonna have an amazing life in Wales. So yeah, this is the lemon tree. The flowers smell absolutely unbelievable. And the lemons, they just keep coming, which is really nice. I've harvested quite a few already and they're so fresh. I'm sure there's something I can do with the leaves too. If you know of any things I can do with the leaves, whether it's like a medicinal tea or something, let me know, comment below the video. But this is gonna get soon get planted into one of these beds as well. So here we are, the compost corner. If you've watched my videos before when I'm out in the garden, you would have seen it before. I've extended it slightly because I'm trying to get as much compost material as possible. And I'm going to places like my local coffee shop where they're giving me their used coffee ground because that is amazing for making compost. So just making connections, I'm getting wood chip from the local tree surgeon. And of course, all of my kitchen scraps are going in to make some really rich and nutritious compost that I didn't have to spend any money on, which is great. And my whole compost system is made up with just old pallets. So what I do once I put some kitchen scraps on is cover them over. I've been covering them over with things like cardboard, or in this case today, I'm using some of my dried leaves that I collected because they are another incredible ingredient to add to your compost piles. And again, they're free of charge. So the reason I expanded my compost corner was because I wanted to stop buying compost and I wanted to try and make as much as possible. I'm lucky enough that I had some space up here to put another pile and it meant that I, had, I could stop putting kitchen scraps and, and compost material onto a pile that was already almost broken down. So I don't put anything else on this anymore. I'm leaving that for all the micros, for all the insects and everything to break this down, all the worms to work their magic and turn this into a compost. This is my new pile that I'll keep building and building up for the next year. And I got to show you what last year's compost pile eventually made. Most of it was spread on my beds in my last homestead tour video. But look, I'm so happy with this. It's so rich and to think that this was old bits of kitchen scraps and cardboard and whatnot. This is like the most fertile, rich compost that I could get my hands on. 
and it's totally free with all my kitchen scraps. I can see worms in there living. This is alive and this would grow the most flavoursome and abundant food. Like this is how rich homemade compost is. A seed of chard must have just dropped next to it. I don't know when or how, but it's growing the most luscious chard leaves just out of the side of this compost heap. Just on the side of the compost heap. That's how rich homemade compost is and that's why we all should be starting one of these in our gardens if you can do. So I'm no longer in Wales at the moment, we've just come to London for the day to shoot some new recipe content for you guys, new photos for the website and all the new recipes I've got coming up we're shooting today with my lovely friend Simon. And one of the things we're shooting is that smoky rhubarb and tomato ketchup. You're probably eagerly anticipating how you could potentially get a jar of this yourself. So what I decided to do, I've got three left. I gave some to my neighbor, to my family and friends. So I've got three jars left. If you pre-order any of the merch, whether it's a t-shirt, a mug or a tea towel, you'll be automatically entered into the giveaway to be able to get your hands on one of these. So if you are successful, there'll be three people chosen and I'll email you if your pre-order has won the raffle to get one of these. So good luck. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you being with me on the journey from lockdown to homestead. I'll keep these videos coming. I enjoy making them because it actually gives me the opportunity to do all the tasks that I need to do in the garden anyway. And it's really fun for me. So thank you for joining me on the journey. Good luck with this. And I appreciate all your support. See you soon guys.